नमस्कार मित्रों हार्टी वेलकम टू आवर यूट्यूब चैनल अन्वेषिका आंध्र प्रदेश टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन अबाउट आवर न्यू इनोवेटिव टीचिंग लर्निंग मेटीरियल दट इज पैरल रेस प्रोड्यूसर द मेन एम ऑफ मेकिंग ऑफ आवर टी एल एम एज टू प्रोड्यूस पैरल रेस एंड ऑल्सो टू शो दि लाइट एक्सपेरिमेंट वेरी एफेक्टिवली फॉर दट पर्पज ई हेव टेकन टू वुडन फ्रेम्स of equal size that is 25 cm length and 2 cm width of two these wooden frames and also i have taken four small frames these four 1 2 3 and 4 of equal size and i have fixed all these wooden frames by using glue gum like this and formed one wooden stand like this this is our wooden stand and for slit purpose i have taken five ice cream sticks and one is placed horizontally like this and the remaining four sticks placed vertically to these two frames and finally i formed groove here and here also to move the slit up and down and to make the slit i have taken one sheet of black paper and i have pasted that paper on this playing card this side and at the middle of this card i have cut like this and formed one single slit and in the similar way i have formed three slit card also and these two cards we have to place in this grooves like this and also i have taken one black sheet of paper which is used for closing and opening of this slit now i have taken this shuttle cock barrel which is freely available and its length is around 34 cm but i have cut it into 20 cm length only and i have fixed 15 cm focal length of convex lens at one end of this barrel by using glue gum and at the other end of this barrel i have fixed one 15 watt filament bulb to the holder with connecting wire like this but here we have to fix this filament bulb of the filament exactly at the focal length of this convex lens here i have put it at exactly 15.3 cm so now this barrel is placed on this wooden stand like this and so this is our parallel rays producer now coming to its applications the first one is rectilinear propagation of light so what is that mean the light can travel in a straight line path so for that purpose i have placed single slit in this slit place and i am switching on the light and you have to observe how the light ray can travel i am opening the slit slowly and you have to observe that the ray is traveling in a straight line path it is moving in forward direction direction so again i am closing you observe that it is closed and again it is in propagation if i placed an opaque material in the path of this light ray you observe that the light is not coming in this way so what is that mean to travel in a straight line path it needs a transparent medium so for transparent medium i am taking this acrylic rod and i am placing this rod in the path of this light ray you observe that here the light is coming in this direction up to this point and after that it comes like this and again it goes in this way what is that mean here the medium is changing so when the medium changes the refractive index changes so the light bends so from this we understand that to travel in a straight line path we need homogeneous transparent medium if i place like this then you observe that the light is not going in this way why because you see here here the surface of this transparent medium is non homogeneous 
So, in the non-homogeneous medium, the light cannot travel in a straight line path. So, from these, we have to understand that to travel in a straight line path, we need, we need transparent homogeneous medium. Then only the light can travel in a straight line path. From this, we can also explain the lateral shift. You keenly watch this one. Here, here is the straight line path and here is the shift. So, we can easily explain the lateral shift. And in our test book, we are also using this type of transparent block. And here is, here is the lateral shift. So, in this way, we can explain rectilinear propagation of light and the lateral shift. Now coming to the second application of this parallel rays producer, I have taken one circular scale like this and also one plane mirror and I am placing this plane mirror in this horizontal line like this and now as I am opening the single slit like this you observe that how the ray is coming and it incident on the plane mirror. So this is incident ray and further opening the slit you observe that the ray is reflected back like this. So this is our reflected ray. So this is incident ray and this is reflected ray and this point is known as point of incidence that where the light is incident on this plane surface. So if you draw the normal line at this point of incidence to this plane surface we get this normal line. So this is incident ray and this is normal line and this is reflected ray. And keenly watch this one, this is one plane and all these three lines are in this plane. So we can say that the incident ray, reflected ray and the normal all are lie in same plane which is known as first law of reflection. Now coming to the angles, here the angle between the incident ray and the normal is known as angle of incidence and it is denoted by the letter small i and here the angle of incidence is 10 degrees and this is reflected ray and the angle between the normal line and the reflected ray is known as angle of reflection and it is denoted by small r and this angle is also 10 degrees so angle i is equal to angle r now i am increasing the angle of incidence like this and here the angle of incidence i is 20 degrees and angle r is also 20 degrees. Again I am increasing the angle of incidence. Here it is i is 30 degrees and r is also 30 degrees. So in this way we observe that always angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. That is angle i is equal to angle r which is nothing but second law of reflection. Now coming to the fourth application, you observe that as I am rotating the mirror with some angle and you have to observe how the reflected ray rotates angle. Here I am rotating the mirror like this. I am rotating slowly and you observe here the reflected ray is also rotating with some angle and I am rotating, I am rotating here and now it is exactly 10 degrees, you observe here, here the angle of rotation by the mirror is 10 degrees and observe that here the reflected ray rotates from 10 degrees to 30 degrees, that means it makes an angle 20 degrees. The mirror rotates an angle is 10 degrees and the reflected ray makes an angle 20 degrees. That means if the mirror rotated 
by an angle with theta then the reflected ray rotates an angle to theta now coming to the fifth application normal incidence here observe that i am adjusting the plane mirror placing normally to this incident ray and here you observe as i am opening the slit the ray is coming and incident on the mirror and further moving it again go back to the same path so what is that mean here if you assume that the ray is incident like this and the normal is also here so the angle between the incident ray and the normal is zero so angle i is zero and also the reflected ray goes in this direction only and the normal line is also here so the angle between the reflected ray and the normal is also zero so angle r is also zero so from this we understand that if the ray incident normally then the angle of incidence i is zero and also angle of reflection angle r is also zero from this we can easily explain these five properties that is rectilinear propagation of light first law of reflection second law of reflection and the um, if the mirror rotates an angle theta then the reflected ray rotates rotates an angle 2 theta and also the normal incidence thank you